Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel. Today guys, I want to talk about the dangers of dealing in vintage watches. And I got to tell you, vintage is really fucking hard. Really fucking hard. And uh, <coughs> recently, recently, I sold a red 1680 and I had another guy came to me and said, Hey, you can help me sell my 1680. And he sent me some pics and uh, I got a, a dealer, <coughs> a friend of mine. Actually, he was a friend and I had a fight with him. But if I flick him some money, he'll just tell me whether the dials. The big thing with vintage is the dial, the dial, the dial. The dial is so crucial. So I actually sent him 50 to tell me 100% this dial is right or wrong. <clears throat> dial fine. So this guy is in Australia. I said, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, you want me to broker this watch for you? That's fine. He was going to post it to me. I said, no, 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 no. $20,000 plus red 1680. No, 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 no. You don't post that. I will fly down and pick the fucking thing up. Uh, at my expense, I might add, at my expense. So what did I do? I jump on a jet plane, <clears throat> jump on a jet plane, and went to Melbourne. Went to Melbourne. I was flying Jetstar. The Seuss brothers, they very kindly upgraded me to the suite at the Crown. So that's a little bit of a side fringe benefit, okay? <clears throat> Anyhow. I met him. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's he's an he's an ex ambo ambulance driver. Nice guy. Just just you know, some people you meet they just cunts. Some people you meet you think ah oh, he's he's a cool guy. A uh, bit of a bit of a collector. A bit of a you know he didn't have a massive collection, but he had a few interesting pieces. He had a really interesting 1950s 1960s rose gold Omega with teardrop lugs. Uh, it's quite nice. It's oh, a nice Amiga, nice Amiga, big size, big size, which is rare for that time period. Then he 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 had a Gerard Perrigue, which let's not even talk about that. I said, oh, very very soft. Uh, Gerard Perrigue, I don't like the brand. I don't like the brand. I would not touch him with a uh, a scratchy bar. I wouldn't touch him with a scratchy bar. But uh, you, you 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 anyhow anyhow, I just. It, 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 I just said to him, hey, not my cup of tea. Anyhow, the 1680, he pulls it out. I had a look at it. <clears throat> I've already had my dial guy. <coughs> actually, no, not yet. I, I hadn't actually done that yet. But I would um, I had a look at it, look at it myself. Yes, yes, it all checks out fine, no problems. I said, look, I can broker the deal. No worries. I said to him, this is the minimum price. I'll pay for it. I said to him, look. No problems, I have it sold very easily. So, <clears throat> jumped, went to the, the uh, Crown Casino, met the Sos brothers, had a great, great, great night, had some fun, went to the mahogany room. Next day, jumped on Shitstar and flew back home. Then, the, the week after that, I flew to Sydney. Sydney, 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 just come back from Sydney. Like, I haven't done the videos yet, so I didn't really announce it, but <clears throat> this is what happened. Went to Sydney, then I went to see, I got a vintage watch watchmaker. He specializes in vintage. <clears throat> he charges a mozza. Fucking fortune he charges. He's not cheap. He's not cheap, but he's the best, in my opinion, the best Rolex vintage watchmaker in, in probably the world. Probably the world. Probably the world. 30-year veteran. Knows his shit. <clears throat> he's not cheap. He's not fucking cheap. I believe you me. Anyhow, but that's okay. He's a professional. You're paying for him. So I took the watch to him. He opens it up. Takes the movement out. Takes the dial out. <clears throat> looks at the case. He tells me, dial. I said, just keep me out of my suspense. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Dial original. <clears throat> he said, this is a singer dial. He said, there's a various numbers of the blah, 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 blah. This is a genuine 1680 red. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Then we looked at the case. This is the, the case, not the back, the case. Case is fine. A bit of, little bit of it's been polished. Yes, it had been polished. Not over polished, but it had been polished. But, you know, we're talking a 1960s, 1970s watch. That always happens. Case is nice. Nice, honest watch. <clears throat> looks at the movement. <coughs> because 
We want to make sure the movement's right. Yes, movement's correct. It's a non-quick set. Correct caliber. Correct. Everything's correct. Blah, blah, blah. Everything's good. Because this is a nice, honest watch. No problems. I had a buyer with me. <clears throat> the buyer was there. So, okay. Done. Let's agree on a price. Then we discover a small problem. A small problem. Guess what? Guess what, guys? It's got the wrong back. Okay, it is a Rolex back. It's a vintage Rolex back. It's a 5513 back on a 1680. Yes. Yes, wrong back. Now, this could have happened anywhere. It could have happened anywhere along the line when this watch was being serviced. Um, I, I suspect possibly the first owner may have put an engraving on it. Then the next owner has gone to a, a jeweler or watchmaker and said, hey, I want to get it off. He said, oh, I've got a spare back. Boom, boom, boom. But it's the wrong spare back. See, back in the 70s and that, when these things weren't really valuable, no one really cared whether it was a 1680 back or a 5513. Same series, same... Oh, that's okay. It's a, that's a acceptable swap. Well, not now it's not. In this modern age now... No, no, no. Um, mm, what can I say? What can I say indeed? Um, what can I say indeed? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Wrong back. Wrong back. Wrong back. Vintage is so hard. Vintage is so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. See, years ago, people didn't take the care that they do now. Now they're very expensive, valuable watches. They don't... They're very careful. Back then, they weren't really collectible or valuable or anything. It was quite acceptable to swap and mix and match these bits. So... What's a, 16, a red 1680 work with the wrong back? It's fucking hard. And then you want to... I mean, admittedly, a 5513 back is highly highly valuable thing. Um, yeah. What do you think? What do you think indeed? I don't know what to say. I do not know what to say. It's... Fuck this. Absolutely fuck this. Absolutely fuck this. That's all I can say. So, what do I think? What do I think indeed? Fuck! Vintage is so hard, man. Vintage is so damn hard. So, uh, yeah. I just wanted to relay this story. So, there you go. I flew to Melbourne. By the time airfares, I oh, went with shit star, so what's that? 350. Uh, I had a cheap hotel, it was 130, so 350, 450, 480. Ubers to and from the airport, both ends, Brisbane and Melbourne end, 200. 650. Not to mention, I then went to Sydney. I'm a thousand dollars in, have not made a fucking cent, and it's got the wrong back. Fuck me dead! Fuck me dead! This is hard. Vintage is hard! <laughs> it's so hard to put deals together. Fuck me dead! You can see why vintage is so fucking valuable. Because so fucking many things can go wrong. And this is a nice, honest, good watch! Fuck! <laughs> it's a disaster! Absolute disaster. Jesus, I'm Archie Luxury. Let me stick to videos. Let me stick to videos. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. I'm only signing it because it costs nothing. <laughs> so this is...
congratulations to everybody.